Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we have a couple of very interesting topics, but we'll start with this one. I found this one particularly interesting because at Texas Pro in 212 division we have a classic case of apples versus oranges. So if you guys watch Tampa Pro 212, you remember these two guys. On the right here you have Carrot Bio, on the left you have Cody Drobat. Carrot was second to Keon. Nathan Epler took third at Tampa and Cody Drobat here was fourth at Tampa, but now these guys make the top two. And honestly, I thought at Tampa it was a pretty big difference between them, but here I'm looking at this and I'm really not sure who is gonna win it, because again, it is a case of apples and oranges. So if you take a look at this photo, you are probably thinking, well, Carrot's got this in the bag. He's bigger, he's rounder, he has more density, he has better conditioning, better coloring, he has more maturity, he's just rounder, more massive, more muscular. He placed ahead of Cody at Tampa, and you would be right with all that, but... I think I can make a pretty good case for Cody Drobat actually ending up in the top. Let me show you a couple of photos and videos. Carrot's waistline from the front is not really that good, but everything else, muscularity, conditioning, density, thickness, he has it all, man. This guy is insane. He looks like a freak. If they are judging this show based on, you know, graininess, based on muscularity, based on oral thickness, density, maturity of the physique, then Carrot wins, hands down. I mean, he looks like a proper freak. But then you take a look at Cody and you go, wow. This is one really aesthetic, really good flowing and a really complete physique with great conditioning. As you can see, he's really not lacking any muscle. He's just smaller, but he has a really nice flow. Look at this. He has a really good back and from behind he reminds me a little bit of Flex Lewis actually who was dominating the 212 for 7 years in a row and maybe it's just me seeing this resemblance, I don't know about you guys, I don't know about the judges and I don't know if that's gonna affect his placement at this show, still top 2 would be an amazing result but I cannot say that I don't see this guy potentially even winning. Maybe he's not exactly the biggest guy at this show, but his flow is just amazing. Now take a look at his back double bicep. As you can see, especially in the glutes, Carrot has just more muscle and he's harder. But as far as the shape, you know, Keon was actually able to beat Carrot at Tampa mainly because of shape. It wasn't because of conditioning. He has incredible shape, but also he was probably bigger than Carrot. And uh, Cody here is not that big, he's definitely much smaller. He improved his conditioning from Tampa to now, I'm pretty sure about that. And with this shape that he has, very, very aesthetic, classic looking shape, he's kind of pushing Carrot. I'm pretty convinced that it's going to be Carrot who ends up winning, but maybe there will be some judges who will actually appreciate Cody's shape and maybe it's not gonna be an easy win for Carrot. I don't know what's gonna be the outcome, if I had to bet, I would definitely bet on Carrot. I mean, he did beat Cody just one week ago and he couldn't have improved that much and I'm not sure how different is the judging panel, but I think everything considered Carrot is probably winning this show, but again, apples and oranges, guys. I mean, bodybuilding is a very subjective sport. Uh, tell me, who do you personally have winning here? Do you think Carrot's muscularity and density and hardness are gonna be enough or would you rather go with somebody who is maybe smaller but has a really good looking shape and also very good conditioning whatever your thoughts are tell me in the comment section down below now let's move on to the classic physique now why am i showing you this lineup is there somebody here from olympia I don't know, maybe there are a lot of guys doing the Olympian classic physique. I see one familiar face, that's uh, Courage Opara. I think he was like fifth at the Arnold Classic one year. Uh, that's not why I'm showing you this. I'm showing you this because this is the first call out, the top six. Do you see Florian Porson here? You don't. No, because he didn't really look that good. I made a video about Florian transitioning from open to classic physique a couple of videos ago. If you want to learn more about him, check that video out. But basically, he used to be an open bodybuilder. You can see him here at Portugal Pro, here on the right. You can see that he competed against uh, Roman Fritz, Ian Valier, Mohamed Shaban, uh, Lucas Osladil. Uh, is that Samson Dauda on the left? Anyways, he competed against these open guys. He never really was a mass monster, but he competed against these guys. And these guys 
guys here are massive Ian, Mohammed, these guys are really big and he stood next to them and he held his ground he actually looked decent as you can see he had very dominant legs upper body was a little bit smaller he had a pretty aesthetic physique he was never again he was never super super massive but still he was big he decided to switch to classic physique, I don't know what was the reason, whatever it was, he did that and uh, I was watching his progress, a lot of pages, a lot of bodybuilding Instagram pages were sharing his updates and he looked phenomenal on his Instagram, he looked like he could potentially win Texas in classic physique but he barely made a top 10. He was in third call out I believe so he did crack that top 10 but you know, that's not what we expected, we expected more of this guy and uh, unfortunately he failed. Now what is the reason? I think it is his waistline, I think that was the biggest issue here. He was big once and when you get that big everything grows and some body parts can never really go back to what they were before and his waist probably has grown uh, when he was force feeding, when he was doing whatever it took to grow and now his waist did not come down, it kind of stayed very big and everything else was just simply underwhelming, you know, the size of his arms, the size of his back, his chest, everything was just small and flat and he just didn't have that wow factor, he has a good shape, as you can see his back is very well shaped, also his legs, he could have been a great classic physique uh, competitor if he never did the open, but I think being an open bodybuilder for that long expanded his waist and also he has no details in the abs and you cannot do classic physique can do well without any abs, look at this, where are the abs, no abs whatsoever, no six pack, nothing is going on, dead, now he, here he tried to flex, but here, look at this, what is going on here, nothing, nothing, so you cannot do very well without good abs in classic physique, I don't know what is the reason for this guy changing division, is it health, is it simply not wanting to push things anymore, not having motivation to eat a ton of food, maybe he realized he can't get big enough to actually be competitive, you know, at the Mr. Olympia level in the open, but he can downsize and look pretty aesthetic in the classic physique division, and okay, he can do okay, you know, in open pro shows he can be top 10, and that's, I mean, that you can say that's success, but you know, compared to what he used to do, being one of the top guys, sort of top guys in the open, you know, at the maximum, maximum level of bodybuilding in the world, and coming down to something like this, I don't think this is what he expected, what he was hoping for, so you can consider this, I consider this a failure of uh, Florian Poyerson, can he change something for the next shows? I don't, I don't see it, I mean, he's conditioned, he has great conditioning, there is just simply no details in the abs, there is no details in the lower back, and I'm talking about the erectors, and also the waistline is not super small, so even if he improves, maybe his arms a little and comes a little bit uh, drier, fuller, harder, I don't see him being in top 5, top 6 in these shows, or winning a pro show in classic physique and qualifying for the Mr. Olympia, unfortunately it is what it is, I'm just being honest, I don't think he's gonna go back to the open now, and uh, I think this is it for him, maybe he can improve a little bit over the years, and maybe some year, someday he can actually win a pro qualifier, actually Mr. Olympia qualifier, but I don't think that's gonna happen this year, what do you guys think? Alright, the next thing I wanted to talk about is Roman Fritz and I find this guy very very interesting because he has such a unique body, a machine, a freaking furnace of a body, this guy burns so many calories, it is absolutely ridiculous, what he's eating in the off season, how he's carving up and still ending up flat, it's just ridiculous, it's mind boggling. And here is what he looks like right now, so he spent a week in Texas at the Ben Chow's house, and I told you guys last time I spoke about Roman, I thought he's gonna improve when he has a coach looking after him for a whole week, and I know that Ben Chow is a good coach, he has a good eye, he knows what he's doing, and I'm thinking Roman looks much better here and also Roman says in the caption that he's actually eight pounds heavier and he kind of looks like that he looks bigger I mean eight pounds it's almost ten pounds that's a lot and does his conditioning look worse hell no his conditioning probably looks better so you know I listened to Fuad Abia talking about Roman and yeah they are friends so maybe Fuad wasn't exactly objective but uh, Fuad saw him in Tampa he was there he watched him live and he said that Roman burned too much muscle during the prep and that's why he was smaller but I don't know how sure can Fuad 
could be about that because he didn't see him in person when he was in the offseason and I don't really think that happened I think he was just really really flat and also Fuad said that Roman was super conditioned that he was like the most conditioned bodybuilder he ever saw in person that he couldn't be any any drier any sharper and uh, here he looks more conditioned he looks leaner it's crazy but his skin looks you know see-through and also he looks harder there are more veins there are more separation so he definitely looks better and I think he's just gonna look better and better until he steps on the stage now what the hell did these guys do I asked Ben in the comment section what did they do unfortunately he didn't reply he rarely ever replies to comments but uh, I'm thinking I'm guessing they probably fed Roman a lot of food throughout the entire week because I don't think Roman could ruin his conditioning <laughs> whatever he did in that week he could not ruin conditioning in one week and I'm pretty sure they went like clean food for that one week basically never depleting him and then at the end carving him up even more and just getting him dry with the dehydration last week he just had a whole bunch of junk food in the last two days I think they had a much better approach during this week here is his carb up so as you can see there is still clean food and as the show approaches he's gonna probably go with a little bit more junk food but I don't think they'll go overboard I don't think they need to I think they kept him full throughout the entire week and there is no reason to deplete this guy when he's this freaking depleted throughout the entire prep all he needs to do is just carb up slowly and I think that's exactly what they did they maintain conditioning and fullness and hardness and I feel like this is exactly what Roman needed, a coach, somebody to tell him what to do, somebody to keep him calm, to keep him from going crazy with his ridiculous protocols, to do this in a proper way, in a calm way, in a smart way, and the way they're doing it, it's working, whatever they're doing, it's working, he definitely looks better, and I think he's going to place higher at Texas Pro than he did at Tampa, at Tampa he was, I believe, 13th? he beat two or three guys so that was a big failure and now i think he's going to be hard maybe maybe even in top six we'll see but i think he's going to do better because he's crazy conditioned and if he improves his fullness a little that's probably going to be enough to beat a lot of the guys but not this guy definitely not this guy i had to show you joe mackey right now milo Sarcher posted his photos and he looks incredible amazing look at this physique look at that chest look at the arms look at the shoulders i mean he's a little bit narrow in the in the clavicles but basically this guy I don't see why he couldn't even win the show, I mean, last time at Tampa, he sneaked up all the way up to top 4, and he was nowhere near that, that spot in the pre-judging, he was not on the radar, I mean, the judges don't really know about him, so I don't think they would let him win Texas, even if he looked the best, but he has a better chance to be in one of those top spots. I don't really see why this guy couldn't win this show, he looked amazing in Tampa, and here he looks much improved, look at this freaking conditioning, this is insane! Look at this, look at this and tell me that this is not the best crab pose, most muscular from Tampa Pro, it's gotta be, it, it has to be, but he was soft from behind. And also he could learn to pose better, he could definitely do this pose in much better way, his back also should come up a little, it doesn't look that good, but I'm sure when he does this pose better it's gonna look bigger, wider, and it really looks like he improved his conditioning significantly. Now, talking about him winning, I don't think that's gonna happen really, but I think he's going to surprise some people, I think he's going to uh, place higher than some people who are expecting to, who are not really expecting this guy to beat them he has a phenomenal shape crazy looking arms crazy looking shoulders even though he's not the widest guy he has super round 3d popping looking delts and i think he's doing that he's making them that way because he needs that width and overall he has that bubbly physique i mean 3d all over the place and if he comes even more conditioned and he will just look at this look at his dryness look at his conditioning milos hatcher is coaching him and milos has a lot of success lately with these guys he knows how to 
to get these guys conditioned and he knows how to get them dry so I'm expecting this guy to be even drier and of course much fuller at the show and that's gonna do that's gonna be a really good package we'll see how well he's gonna place whatever you guys think tell me in the comment section down below like this video if you enjoyed it and for the coverage of taxes pro open division please subscribe to this channel guys thank you so much thank you for watching all the best and bye bye